Sometimes just one shot isn't enough. Panoramas come in handy for showing the magnitude of what lays in front of you and your camera. Today I'll be showing you my techniques I like to use in doing panoramas as well as stitching them together in Lightroom. So why do a pano in the first place? Well, to begin with, you may not have a lens wide enough to capture the whole scene, or you really want to convey the scale of what you're seeing. Other times you may want to create an image that's high in pixel count, so you can create a much larger, clearer print for your wall or to sell. I won't be touching too much on the technical aspects of taking panoramas today. Instead, I'm going to concentrate on showing you the type of techniques that I use with both my camera and tripod. But to do that, I'm gonna to have to grab this camera, swing it around the back here, and we'll go from there. So here we are, I've got the camera behind my Nikon D850 and I've got my L bracket on. So now if you don't have a shutter release trigger for your camera, the best thing to do is put it into timer release mode. So something like about two to five seconds, when you hit the shutter, it allows the camera enough time to stop shaking and get the shot. So the first things what we need to do is put the camera up into portrait mode. Now, why am I doing that? First of all, the reason why I put it up into a portrait is because it allows me to get much more of my landscape, both top and bottom. Secondly, it also allows me the opportunity to crop it top and bottom when I'm doing the post-processing. Another benefit of having it in portrait mode is that this camera is a 45 megapixel camera. So you've got to think, say for example, I do five individual shots across my landscape. Each one of those shots is 45 megapixels. So you can imagine by the time we finish doing the post-processing on it, the megapixel count in the photo should be quite large. And by the way, you can certainly do panos in landscape orientation, but there are a few more advantages in doing it in portrait style. So my technique is I've set up my camera, I've got the exposure right, everything's correct. I'm gonna begin with coming out over to the left-hand side, and you're gonna see that I've got my level nice and level there. I cannot stress how important it is to have your camera nice and level during a panorama. The technique I use, I tend to pivot, like I'm pivoting on a coin. So your camera just pivots around in the one position. Trust me when I say this, by doing it that way, keeping it nice and level and pivoting around, is so much easier putting it together in post-processing. So let's just do that quickly. I'm gonna do a five shot straight across this little landscape here. I'm gonna start out there, two second timer release on my shot. And there's one shot. I'm gonna come around a little bit. Just remember to have a little bit of an overlap from the last shot because it really does help Lightroom or Photoshop in putting it together. Another shot there, two second timer release. Come around again, nice and level. A Little bit of overlap from the last shot. Another shot there. Once again, come around again. I'm just gonna finish on this tree right here. And another shot there. If you don't have a level on your camera, then sometimes your tripod might have a level built into it. So you can use that instead. So at least now you know the technique that I like to use. But now what we're going to do is we're gonna skip over into Lightroom and I'm going to put together a panorama that I did down in Binalong Bay in Tasmania earlier this year in January. It was actually from another video. Um, I'll leave that link to that video up here if you wanna have a look at it just a bit later on. But for now, let's just skip over to Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and I've got these five vertical portrait orientation shots from this crazy beautiful sunset that I took down in Tasmania. So the scene that laid in front of me this afternoon really did require a panorama because as you can see, the cloud formation went right across the horizon and I just couldn't fit that all in to one shot. So just very quickly, what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to select say about the middle shot that I took and I'm just going to do a bit of work on that and what I'll do first to begin with is I will come down to where it says remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections that's just going to fix up any distortion or vignetting in the lens I'm not going to go too crazy here because I'm going to do more or less the finishing touches on the whole image when it's all put together so to begin with with the whites I'm going to First of all, crush those right down. Because of the horizon, it is so bright out there. I've got to crush those whites all the way down. The blacks, I'm actually gonna lift up just a tad. With my exposure, I'm actually gonna lower it down a bit because what I'm trying to do 
is I want to get the sky correctly exposed. Don't worry about the darkness in the foreground. I'm going to work on that once the image is all put together. So that's looking pretty good around about there. Highlights, I might just drop those down a little tiny bit as well. Shadows, I'm going to lift up the foreground here. Just a tad, just a small bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the bottom here and hit Command A or Control A. What I'm going to do is sync all those shots with just those little tiny adjustments that I've made on that one photo. To simply do this, you just click on Sync and it tells you everything that it's going to apply to all of those shots. You just hit Synchronize. Now to put together as a panorama, I'm going to come up to the top here and under Photo, I'm going to come down to Photo Merge and it says Panorama. Click on that. And what will happen is it'll start putting these shots together for you. So now there's our panorama put together. Up here, you've got these different type of projections. We've got spherical, cylindrical. What I'm gonna go for is the spherical setting on this one. Um, I've just left it on auto crop because Lightroom does do a pretty good job of that. If you click on auto settings, what'll happen is Lightroom will go through and it will kind of like, it'll have a look at the whole type of shot and try to correct it in terms of settings. But I don't want that to happen because I want to individually fix this myself. So just get rid of auto settings there. So I'm happy with that as is, and we just go on ahead and click merge. And you'll see up on the top left-hand corner, it's creating the panorama. So what's happened now is down the bottom here, let's put our panorama together, we'll click on that. And what I'm going to do to begin with, I'm just gonna come down where it says the lens corrections again, and I'm actually gonna hit enable profile corrections again, and you'll see it makes that whole picture now more straighter and less warped. I'm gonna come back up to where my sliders are. And first things first, what I want to be able to do, I wanna just add a little bit more drama into that sky. I'm gonna come over here and click on graduated filter or you just hit M on your keyboard. From up the top in the middle, I'm just gonna drag down just into about the middle of the image. And I'm going to lower that exposure just a tad. Now the same goes for the foreground. You can see that it's still a little bit dark at the moment, but I'm going to use a graduated filter here and drag up into the middle. And I'm going to lift up that exposure just so we can see that rock formation. And those rocks were just incredible, all covered in this bright orange lichen and it was just fantastic. The whole scene was just incredible. So yeah, something to about there. Over here, we've got some quite dark patches as well as you'll notice the white balance isn't really that great around these rocks and we're going to fix that right now. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush and I'm just gonna use a very soft edge brush, something like, um, let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go up to say about 17, 18. And I'm just gonna have a nice feathered edge at about 61, flow 65, and the density at 100. So I'm just gonna very carefully, oh, hang on, let me just turn this on for you so you can see, show selected mask overlay. And I'm just going to paint around these rocks just nice and carefully. And what this will actually do is it'll allow me to change the exposure, the white balance, the color, contrast, everything on these rocks. So there you go. Let me just untick that for you. And up where our sliders are. So first of all, with the color, I need to warm it up a bit. So with my temperature, I'm just gonna lift that up a bit. And you can see that the rocks are just changing that little bit more to a natural type of orange color. Something like about there. I'm gonna lift up the exposure a little bit as well. Just a little bit less, just to about there. As well as I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast. Yeah, something like that. Now, over here, on the left hand side of the image, we're finished with our adjustment brush, just click on that again. And I'm just gonna zoom in 
over to this side bit here, you can see that this little section here is a little bit dark. Once again, I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush and I'm just gonna make that brush a little bit smaller. You can just use your brackets on your keyboard to make those a little bit smaller. Once again, I'll just hit show selected mask overlay. I'm just gonna paint around here because what I'm going to do is just lift up the light on that darkness area there because I just wanna see a little bit more definition in that Australian bushland. I won't go too much into the sky because I really don't want to affect that sky. A little bit of a smaller brush on the end here. Something like that and just turn that off. And very simply, I'm just going to lift the exposure up on that little section there. Not too much, just a little bit. Let's go back to fit that to screen. So that's looking pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do, I've just noticed if you look over on the horizon here, let me just turn that adjustment brush off. On the horizon, you'll notice that the sea seems to be going on a bit of a downhill slope. Now that was probably because I shot this on such a wide angle, but I'm going to fix that. And it's very easy to fix. I'm just gonna come up to here where it says crop and click on that. Now we can lock the crop if, we, if we're happy with that type of style, but I'm just going to hit um, unlock on this and then just underneath here it says angle click on that and what i'm going to do is just follow that line and it's, it's basically going to straighten up the horizon for me that's much better now the other thing is i'm just going to drop that top down a little bit because i don't want that much sky just something like about there and just hit enter and all over what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up the exposure just a tad on the whole image. A bit too much. Something like about there. As well as I'm going to give it a little bit of vignetting. So this will add a little bit of dramatic look to it. So on the vignetting over here where it says post crop vignetting, I'm just going to lower it and you'll see there's a little bit of a darkness comes around the outside edge. And by the looks of this, I think you can really see why it's called the Bay of Fires. Well, thanks so much for watching. I really hope these panorama tips help you out. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.